Um, for those who have led our prayers this morning and led us in thought, thank you, Rob. What a beautiful day it is to be able to assemble in the name of the Lord Jesus. Open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2 this morning. Philippians chapter 2. As we announced last week, we're going to be looking this week at what obedience looks like. What obedience looks like. What it uh, feels like. Uh, we're going to, to go back with God. We're going to go back to the days when Jesus lived upon this earth. And we're going to listen to Him and look at Him as the perfect example for us. So begin with me, if you will, in Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read the first 13 verses and listen to what God has to say for us this morning. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ... If there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, don't you want to be part of something like this? I mean, those, those beautiful, encouragement, consolation of love, fellowship, compassion. I need that. I need that. And we know that, that there is this and even more in Christ Jesus. He says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, and intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in likeness of men, being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and those who are on earth and who are under the earth, that every tongue will confess that, Christ, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as much uh, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Powerful. In, in encouraging, li listening to these words, the very Word of God, having the same mind, having the same mind, the same love, united in spirit, and one purpose. You might remember eight years ago. If, if you can remember back that far, you remember when we were talking about th this very concept and, and what this is summed up in, the same mind, the same love, united spirit, one purpose, Quite literally in the translation, when we're looking at one purpose, God is saying one thing thinking. One thing thinking. He said, wrap, wrap your mind around that. This is what God wants for us. Just like it existed with, with the Father and the Son, Jesus' prayer, that, that we will be one, that we'll be one in Him as, as He is one with the Father and, and the Father is one with the Son. So much alike that Jesus could say to His own apostles who, who had been with Him for three and a half years, if you have seen Me, you have seen the Father. Philip had just asked in, in John chapter 14, he, he, he said, Lord, show us the Father and it'll be enough. And Jesus, Jesus said, have, have I been with you so long and you've missed this? That I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, then, then you have seen the Father. 
And he's telling us as, as, as his body, as the church, he said, have this same mind, same love, united in spirit with, with one person, with, with one purpose, one thing thinking. We even wrote it up on banners and we put it around the building to, to help us in our one thing thinking. And what was that one thing thinking? What was that one thing thinking? Have the mind of Christ. Have, have the atti attitude of Christ in, in, in verse 5. Because Jesus has given us His mind. Have, have this mind. Jesus has shown us his, his attitude. And it begins with humility and obedience. And it stays there. It, 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 never, it never leaves. Looking at Jesus' perfect example, this, this is where He began, and this is where He lived, and this is where He ended. Have Christ's thinking in us. It's a lot easier talked about than done. It's a lot easier talked about than done. Jesus' humility. Let's, let's look at humility first. Jesus is God. Not, not, just, not just was God, Jesus is God. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was God. And, and that Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And, and we beheld His glory. We talked about that last week. We beheld His glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Four weeks ago, we had a lesson just entirely on glory. The glory of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is God. Always has been, always will be. But yet, He emptied Himself of that. He emptied Himself. He did not consider it something you had to hold on to for dear life. He did not consider it something that, that he could not lay aside. Can you imagine, after the Olympic swimming stars, after the Olympic run, running stars, the, 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 the true, the, all of them are athletes, but, but one of them will win the gold. Can you remember, I, I, and I don't know how many, how many gold they, they won, but I, I know some of the swimmers have, have, have excelled, and, and, and they have won five and six and, and, and seven, and, and, and even, is, is that enough, or have they won more than that gold? How, how many have they won? Help, help me out there. Can, can you imagine after, after winning all of those gold medals, to go down on 4th on, uh, and 5th Street at midnight, here, here in Anchorage, and, and uh, you're, you're going to meet some unique people down there. I've, I've never been down there. I've only heard about it. I've been down there during the day. I don't care to go down there at night. But can you imagine going down there at, at night and taking all of those gold medals and, and asking someone, would you hold those with me for a few minutes, you know, and, or for me for a few minutes? And I, I, I want to go in here and get a cup of coffee. And, and you know, they, you know they're, they're just so showy. I mean, they're, they're just so gold. And, and would, would you please take care of that for me? Never. In fact, if you had them, you'd go down there with a bodyguard. You wouldn't want to get out and even walk down the street with them. No comparison. Jesus did not consider being God something he had to hold on to. I've never been a bug. Now, maybe I've bugged you, but I have never been a bug. I've, I've never been an insect. And, and of, all of all of the insects that there are, I would, I'd rather be most of them before I would choose to be an ant. Now, we can see things that we now, because of technology, that we couldn't see years ago. 
But ants still top the list for me for being hideous. There, there's not anything about an ant that I like. I don't know, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you like them. Maybe, maybe you, as a child, had an ant farm at, at home, bought one of those, those plastic ant farms with the dirt, and, and, and you put the ants in, or maybe they even gave you uh, egg, uh, ant eggs so that you could watch them uh, as, as they were hatched. And on, on one end is this ugly, ugly head with pinchers. And, and they go around looking for things to, to, to pinch and, and to grab onto and, and, and to kill and, and bring back for, for all the other ants to, to devour. And, and I think that'd be a hor horrible way to die. And, and on the other end is a stinger. There's just nothing. That doesn't even compare. I, I would not for one minute want to be an ant. That doesn't compare. Jesus was God. I cannot even imagine that. You, you cannot, in, in your greatest imagination, conceive of, of God. We, we try. We, we do the best we can, but He did not consider that something He had to hold on to, so He empties Himself. And then when He found Himself like us. I, I don't know what he was thinking. I, I don't know how he felt. I, I know how I feel. But when he found himself as a man, certainly that was very different. He, he's, he's God now, and then he's man. He emptied himself of being God. And when he found himself as man, he empties himself again. He humbles himself. And, and he, lived, he lived a life of, of, of humility. And he died a death. He, he died a death of humility. And he became obedient. Number, number two. He, he became obedient. He knew he was going to die. He didn't just die like everyone. And, and just his death was... It's not just how he died. It's who he was when he died. God on a cross. Jesus dying. Of course he died a horrible death. But, but it wasn't just his death. It, it was who he was that was dying. The way he was treated. Did you know that there was, not, there was not a single person, not a single person stood up for him except Pilate? Just think about that. You know, we talk about today when, when there's trouble between people. When there's trouble between families. We hear people say, well, blood is thicker than water. It wasn't that day. There was none of Jesus' family there except his mother. And of course you would, you would expect her to be there. But, but not a brother. Not, not a, a family cousin. His brothers said, we tried to talk him out of doing this kind of thing. In fact, we wanted, we wanted to put him away privately. He, he's, he's an embarrassment. No, no brother there. No, no best friend standing up for him saying, wait, wait a minute. But he, but he, he died as, as, as a criminal. And the only, the only voice standing up for him was a politician. It was, it was Pilate. It, it, if, if we had been there, we would have said nothing either. Pilate or, or, or Peter, very, very loud the night before, saying, I, I, I would, I'll not deny you. I'll die first. But he denies him three times that night. The, the closest to Pilate was, was Pilate's wife, who, 
who, who said, I had a dream about him, have, have nothing to do with him. And maybe that influenced Pilate to say something on his behalf. But no one. No one. Lazarus lived close enough that he could have come over. Earlier, or earlier that week, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus isn't there. Nicodemus isn't there to speak up for him. No, no one spoke up for him. Where are all the people he healed? Where, where's, the, where's the one leper of the ten that came back and thanked him? Where, where's, the, where's the man by the pool of Bethsaida? Or the pool of Siloam? Not there. We would not have been there either. We would not have been there either. Hmm. Obedience. That's what it looks like. Sometimes it looks like no one else is there. Does that hurt? Yeah. That's, that's what obedience looks like. Because sometimes as you obey, you're all alone. How does that feel? How does that feel? Have, have you ever been abandoned? Have you ever felt like you were forsaken? That's, that's what it feels like. And, and we need to know that. We, we, we need to know that. We, we need to feel that. Uh, oh, obedience to Hebrews chapter 9. Let's, let's go there and, and listen. Because this is the learning of obedience. Hebrews chapter 9, beginning in verse 7. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayer and supplication. He's praying about this with loud crying and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And what was the answer? Salvation from death? No. Empowerment to obey. Empowerment to obey. And listen to what he says. And he was heard because of his piety his godly reverence, his respect for his Father. He was heard. And God gave him the strength to obey. Deliverance? No. Strength. And listen to what God says. Although he was a son, he learned obedience. So Jesus can tell you what obedience feels like. Jesus can tell you what obedience looks like. Jesus can tell you what obedience sounds like. Because He learned obedience from the things which He suffered. And being made perfect, He became to all of those who obey the source of of eternal life. Obedience. Humility and obedience. You see, obedience can hurt. Obedience will hurt at some level because it is a, it is a learned, it is a learned thing. And even the Son of God learned it. Hmm. Sometimes it hurts more than other times, but obedience, 
Obedience does not come without suffering. Denying yourself. You, you, you don't always get your way. You, you don't always even get your say. It do, doesn't always feel good. But at, at the end, at, at the end, there, there is joy. There is joy. There, there may be sorrow in the morning, but there, in, 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 in the darkness of night, but, but joy is coming. So what does obedience look like? Jesus on the cross. This is what it looks like. You see, it's one thing thinking. One thing thinking. And with that, God is pleased. Not, not, no, no don't, don't, don't lose this. Don't miss this. It, it, it's not that God is pleased with suffering. It's not that God is, is pleased with sorrow. It is God is pleased that through Jesus' obedience, the whole world can be saved. God was pleased with that. That's what God wanted. That's what Jesus wanted. And it comes back to one thing Thinking what pleases God. And so God says in Philippians chapter 2, for this reason. Well, I love that. Don't, don't miss that. I don't always like that, but I love that. I need, I need to hear that. So for this reason that Jesus was, was humble, he was able to empty himself of self. He, he was able to empty himself of who he was so he could be who he was. He was able to think. Think one thing. Pleasing God. Pleasing God. And so for this reason, so listen to verse 9, 10, and 11. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him a name that is above every name. For this reason also, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God the Father. Don't wait until you're in the heat of battle. Don't wait until the pressure is on. Don't, don't wait until it, it feels like it's you against the world before you decide to obey. Before you decide to empty yourself. Don't, don't wait until all the pressure's on and, and, and then say, what am I going to do? Make that decision now. Make that decision with a clear head. Make that decision over there. Oh, over there. You, you remember, we, we've come over, over there. We've come over here to before the world ever began. Don't, don't wait un, un, until you're, you're in the garden to decide. Don't wait until all of your friends have abandoned you. Don't, don't wait until the threat of death is there. Decide over here. Decide over here. Before the world was created, before you spoke and there was light, before you spoke and there was, there, there was night and, and day, and before you spoke and, and the waters were separated, before you spoke... And, and all of the plants began to, to live immediately. Before you spoke, and, and there were fish in the sea. Before you spoke, and, and, and there were animals that were made. Before you took the dirt and made man in your image, you decide over here, you decide over here, I'm going to empty myself. I'm going to obey. I'm going to give myself. That's where you decide. You, 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 don't, you don't decide when, when all of the pressure is on. 
you decide first, I will empty myself of me. Boy. I'm still struggling with that. You know how tough it is to, of course you do, because you're you. You know how tough it is to, to swallow your pride. You, you know how tough it is to, to empty yourself of, of you. I cannot imagine what it was like for Jesus as God to empty himself as God. And then find himself as a man and go, boy, this is different. Boy, I mean, I mean that's, that, that would probably be, be more than just obvious. You know, boy, this is different. I was God. I am God. But, uh, but I, and now I'm, I'm a man. Wow. Is that enough? No. No. You've got to empty yourself of man. You've got to empty yourself of, of who you are. You've, you've got to empty yourself. You've got to be humble. We struggle with that, don't we? Make the decision that if you can't make it there, make it now. Before you step out into the world. Before you're, you're, you're pressed to compromise. Before your friends at, at, at work began to lean on you. Before the embarrassment of, of the pressure of your peers. And say, I will obey. I will obey. For this reason. For this reason. So, I love that. Don't you like that? Not, not, not only does God say, for this reason, but then He comes along and, and, and then He says in, in verse 12, He says, so. So, what? Listen to Him. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, hmm, it's not just Jesus that obeyed. It's you. It needs to obey. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. So, sometimes we come up with little sayings, and, 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 and we, feel, we feel proud that we've come up with them. We, we, feel, we feel proud. And, and, and sometimes they even make enough sense that we, we hold on to them. And we'll even print them. And, and, and if we didn't make it up, then we like it. And, and, and so we'll share them with each other. And we'll make bumper stickers. And we'll make thingies for our house. And, and we'll make things for our, our jewelry. And we'll... One of them I want you to be careful with. Not judging how it came about. One of them I want you to be really careful with because it will hurt you. And it's not what God has said. Not in our lesson this morning. People say, let go and let God. It's true. It's true that God has done everything for our salvation. You have done nothing. I understand that. And if that's what that means, go for it. But I don't think that's what it ends up meaning to people. If we're listening to what God is saying this morning, it's not let go and let God, but get in there with God. That's what he's saying. He's saying you do everything you possibly can but you remember that it's God who's working in you. Okay. okay. Let God work in you, but get in there with Him. 
Don't just sit back and wait and say, I don't know what God's going to do next. No, get in there with Him. Listen to it again. Just as you've always obeyed, not, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. God is in you. Stay home with Him. Stay in there with Him and, and work with Him. Let Him work with you, but you work with Him. You ready for that? You, you ready for that? Get in there with Him. You ready for that? Some of you are kind of timid. Kind of stepping back. Don't step back. And, and, if, and if you haven't got in there with Him, get in there with Him. God didn't just put his, the, the mind of Christ in you just to be there and, and just for you to be humble and, and obedient. He, he intends for you to, to get in there in life. Get in there with Him. If you haven't, do it today. Don't put it off any longer. Come right now. Come right now while we stand and sing. Glorify thy name. Father.